Do you prefer to use Kubernetes ROS or YAML? Or do you prefer to have a platform on top of it? If you choose latter, I'll be very happy to introduce to you my project, KubeVita. If you choose the former, I'll still try to convince you against it. Hi, I'm Andy Shi from Alibaba Cloud. This talk is about standardizing cloud-native application delivery across different clouds. A little bit background of who are we. Uh, we are platform builders, and our customers are uh, developers, application developers especially. Uh, we have a large team. We have uh, people working on Kubernetes directly. We have uh, teams working on PaaS, and we also have infrastructure operators. And our uh, customers are internal customers, uh, which is the e-commerce sites of Alibaba. So we maintain some of the world's largest Kubernetes cluster, uh, more than 10,000 nodes. Also, we are the team that's on the Alibaba cloud, which serves the public uh, as public cloud offerings. And what do we build? We build platforms, basically, uh, extending Kubernetes. Uh, and we serve both the um, external customers or public cloud customers and private cloud customers and um, internal business units as well. So our infrastructure is a hybrid infrastructure. We have uh, cloud infrastructure, we have on-prem, and we have hybrid cloud um, solutions as well. But mostly our paths are a wide range of platforms, uh, basically ranging from the full-scale paths to lightweight serverless and middleware platform. And we also have uh, things like EDAS, which is an enterprise um, distributed application service. So all these different flavors, but they all share a lot of features that are common. And maintaining so many different versions of the same feature really is painful. And that's why we are looking at some better approaches to solve this problem. But before we get to the solutions, I think uh, one other question people always ask is, uh, why do we build platforms? Well, like I said in the beginning, if you prefer to use YAML, uh, that is just a small percentage of users. Right? The majority of developers prefer to not directly dealing with Kubernetes, not just because of YAML, but because of the exposure of Kubernetes uh, capabilities right now is very primitive. Imagine this, right? instead of using Linux shear commands, you have to use uh, syscalls to implement the same features. And you need to chain the different syscalls together just to implement one function. Uh, that's where Kubernetes is right now. So majority of our uh, users, which are application developers, they prefer the application-centric way, meaning that they don't really care about the cluster. Right? A lot of tools or platforms, uh, they will provide this uh, cluster-centric or uh, infrastructure-centric view of how many deployments you have, how many uh, uh, other things that's in your cluster. But for application developers, what they care about is my application, right? What they want to have is to just ship their code, um, build it, package it, and deploy it. Right? They really don't care about the cluster or infrastructure, etc. So a lot of our efforts also are concentrated on making the application-centric API or making the application-centric abstractions and application-centric user interfaces. Right? Basically, uh, do a lot of modeling. So I guess what uh, I just uh, described, the problems and the goals are common amongst um, many, many different tools or platforms. Um, Everyone is trying to manipulate uh, the Kubernetes API some way so that um, it's more acceptable to the developers. And everyone is struggling with uh, trying not to reinvent the wheels, um, as we often say. So let me give you um, a little taste of what Kubernetes does before we move on to explain how we are doing it. And um, this demo is, I would say, the first demo uh, of, of Kubevilla. So if you see it uh, and feel like it's not very impressive, I totally understand. 
But I would like to tell you that uh, inside of Alibaba, so many different uh, platforms, we are building this together. So in the short term, we should see a huge difference. Um, let's get through the demo. So via the workloads, um, we show you the workload types that's available. So these are the basic types. Uh, the backend um, is the workload that doesn't open a service, that doesn't open a port. The web service on the other side would just uh, open um, a port. So what web service will do, it's going to create a deployment and a service with a port, right? Uh, backend would only have a deployment on the Kubernetes, but we do not expose um, these APIs to the users. Uh, task is a job uh, for Kubernetes, but again, we don't um, expose those APIs to the user. So uh, what these workloads uh, are abstracted to or from Kubernetes workloads, but they are not really correlated. Uh, it, it can be customized, and we're going to see it. And another tool, uh, another command we're going to see is uh, Vila Trades. <coughs> and it's going to uh, show you all the available trades that you can add um, attached to the components. And here on the uh, right side, um, you can see what kind of, what type of workloads this can apply to. And um, it is a convenient way um, to, to show you, but um, we think it would be better if we can have a in conflict with, right? So some traits are in conflict with another. So we need to know, like um, in description, what is available um, if we have added one uh, trait, uh, if the, the next one will have a uh, conflict or not. But anyway, so that's some in, uh, useful commands that we can use uh, with Vita, but we can check how many um, commands are available. So if we just type Vita, we can see there are a lot of them, um, but uh, they're pretty concise. So we have the um, minimum information that's going to show uh, I'll be printed because we don't want to uh, overwhelm users. And it has created an app um, and a component. So look at this. This is how we uh, design this command line. We say comp um, and we specify uh, the type of the workloads and the image and the port we want to expose. And of course, it's a web service, so you will see um, a deployment and a service, right? And uh, at last, we say it's the app name is my app. So why don't we do it the other way, right? So uh, if we create an app first and then add comp, uh, add components to it, uh, the, this command line would be more cubesome because it's going to be uh, Vita create app my app and then uh, Vita app my app add comp or deploy comp zip. But nevertheless, it really is an app-centric view or app-centric way uh, of doing things. So let's take a look at this app. Right? Uh, Vita app status. It's going to show you the, this application. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, it shows you this application, how many components it has. And also it has the uh, house check. But this house check though, is not uh, always reliable because some uh, pods or some workloads might not have this uh, house check. So here you're gonna see some error information. Uh, so that's something we need to work on. Okay, so we've done with the demo and I hope you like it and enjoy it. Um, I would like to tell you more about uh, this platform. So who is it for? It's mainly for developers, right? De developers are our users or customers. But it's also for platform builders. Um, let me explain a little. So for developers, what we provide is uh, the traditional uh, people are familiar with those pipelines where you can ship your code uh, and build it and deploy it and release it and operate on top of it, right? Uh, 
in terms of operation, we're talking about uh, Kubernetes capability, uh, like traffic shifting, uh, adding a domain, adding TLS, um, doing canary deployment, etc. All these things, uh, we can do it, but so do all the other platforms. But for platform builders, there are always two questions to, to answer. One is how do you make that opinionated approach um, of your uh, presentation layer? And the second one is how do you as absorb the new features, new capabilities that's emerging every day uh, from the community? So Kubevila addresses these two problems um, by adopting what we call the OAM, Open Application Model. Uh, what it does is it allows um, new capabilities to become building blocks so that uh, platform builders don't have to reinvent the wheels. Uh, they can focus on how to present them. And even though um, the features look similar or actually the same, the presentation can be hugely different. Like we've just seen in our uh, use cases, we have pass and uh, fast or serverless at the same level. Right? So they're using the same features. How do you present them to the user? That's another problem. So Kubevita is aiming to help um, platform builders to alleviate that pain um, to adopt new features and presenting them easily to the customers. I would like to tell you about uh, the three design principles of Kubevita. Uh, number one is it, it's application centric. So it's built for the developers. Uh, so we definitely put developers interest at, at the top priority. Uh, application should be the main API that exposes to users. So we don't have uh, things like deployment, uh, replica set, all those uh, APIs from different packages. No, it's all about your AP, uh, applications. And the second principle is we believe that it should be capability oriented. Uh, so each feature, each, each new feature uh, can be added or old features can be deprecated right, without breaking uh, the build, without breaking uh, what, what we have here. And also you should be able to swap out certain capabilities, those, those building blocks, uh, without even changing uh, the look and feel of your product. And that's something we really um, are trying to make a difference. Um, and the third principle is it should be highly extensible, especially for its user interface. So what, what we're talking about is we want to decouple the user interface from the underlying uh, APIs, that's one. And also it should be highly extensible. So we just talked about uh, how painful it is to build an opinionated uh, approach, a pipeline. Right, so you always lose some customers um, in that process. Uh, what we want to do is to have a very flexible um, structure that you can uh, satisfy most of them, or if not all of them, uh, by extending your GUI by keeping different revisions uh, of the look and feel um, of your APIs and serving them to your customers. So that's the three uh, design principles of Kubevila. Um, so next, let's look at um, a simple diagram of Kubevila. In this diagram, we are seeing that the user uh, will interact uh, with, with Kubevila through um, a GUI. There's a GUI uh, that we built, and also through a CRI that um, gives people the flexibility uh, if they have something uh, simple to change or simple to deploy. And also we would have um, what's called the app file um, to deal with um, complicated, more complicated um, user configurations. Now, what we have for the users um, is they're dealing with applications, right? So they're dealing with workloads and traits. What are workloads? Workloads are things that's runnable. Uh, it can be a pod, it can be a task, uh, it can be a job, right? And it can also be a remote cloud service. 
uh, what are traits, traits are operations that you want to attach to the workloads. Uh, things like scaling, rollout, routes, etc. Uh, these traits don't exist by themselves. They have to be tied to a workload uh, to take effect. Right? So these are called traits. Um, the term comes from Rust. Um, on the right side, we see uh, all the capabilities, what they are, they are um, the, the things that's coming out of uh, the community, right? We have Flagger, we have Kida, we have Nginx, etc. Uh, very rich, but you can also define your own controller or CRD, and we can shape them into the building blocks of trades and um, supply them to, to the customers. So that's really what um, Kubita in a nutshell looks like. And we briefly talked uh, about the app file. Uh, what is the app file? Uh, if you take a look at this um, on the app file, you're going to say, oh, wow, it looks a lot like Docker file. Well, actually, Docker Compose file. Yes, uh, that's really the target. We want to bring in this uh, Docker uh, compost user experience. But if you look closely, you're going to see that we have a lot more than what Docker Compose can do. We actually put traits or operational tasks inside this uh, app file. So users can define what, what their whole um, application looks like. And it doesn't have to be just one container. It can be several. Right? In the microservices architecture, you can have several um, components or several workloads and each one would have one or more uh, traits that's attached to them. That's what uh, this app file should be. So on the right side, you're going to see a couple of templates. So these are the templates we talked about uh, earlier. Um, how do you manipulate the user interface? So we use a thing called uh, Q template to generate these templates and to uh, evaluate them. Uh, the good part of this is that when you change the template, let's say you create a new template, uh, it, it will not uh, need any additional steps. They will directly appear uh, on the API and also on the GUI. And you can use them directly um, in your app file. Uh, th th this app file will be evaluated uh, strictly using the templates. And, and the good thing about the template is it uh, decouples from the API itself, right? So, so in the definition part, um, on top of the, um, the template, you're going to see uh, typical Kubernetes APIs, right? It's, there's a kind, there's a group, there's a name, right? But when you are translating them into templates, you don't have to follow that, right? You can define your own. You can even negotiate with your developers uh, what they like to call it, those terms and then put them into uh, the app file. So in the end, as a result, what we have uh, from the app file is that the app file looks nothing, nothing like a Kubernetes YAML file, right? And that's the beauty of what we are doing. Next, let's take a look at uh, the architecture diagram of Kubevilla. Well, if you look at this, you're going to say, well, it looks like that uh, previous nutshell um, diagram inverted 90 degrees. But here it gives you another perspective. So here we are talking about two levels of abstractions. Uh, let's go from the bottom up, right? At the bottom, we see several different uh, projects we listed. And all these projects will provide uh, CRDs or operators, right? And those CRDs and also with some built-in CRD uh, controllers uh, from Kubernetes itself uh, will be shaped into the building blocks, which would be the workloads and the traits. To the user, there's another layer of abstraction, which is what we just talked about, the queue template. So by using that, uh, it's decoupling again um, from the APIs, and it provides a user a very user-friendly application-centric view. And also to the platform builders, they don't have to be bound by uh, the API terminologies. Right? So the users can choose 
uh, to use from uh, a file or CLI or using the GUI uh, if they like to to interact with the system the platform uh, one thing I would like to point out is here uh, we listed project crossplane here so what cross crossplane does for uh, Kubevila are two things one is it provides the um, infrastructure resources or cloud uh, resources, the managed cloud resources, that's the right term, uh, to Kubevila. And B is it also hosts uh, the OAM runtime, the open application model runtime. It's very important. And also I would like to point out that uh, there's a CRD registry, um, something we want to have. Uh, actually, we call that the, the capability registry. Um, so we can keep track of or manage uh, the capabilities that we have inside of Kubevila. So this is basically what uh, the architecture of Kubevila looks like. If we reflect them back to the three principles, uh, we can see that it provides an app-centric view and it gives us the extensibility that we are looking for uh, both on the um, UI side and also on the capability side. Also, we have the capability oriented architecture where um, the building blocks uh, can be added or removed from uh, our Kubevila system without breaking the others. In summary, uh, Kubevila is a project uh, for developers, provides an uh, app centric platform, and it's very easy to ship application, especially cloud native application, uh, and to manage them on Kubernetes clusters. For platform builders, it's highly extensible and uh, it's simpler to maintain, especially when you're talking about adding new features on day two. Um, current project status, uh, we are still in a pre-release stage. Um, so if you try it, um, probably something will break, but hopefully not. Uh, we have a roadmap. Uh, we would like to have a, a 1.0 uh, release on December. And current features uh, that's available would be app file and CRI, and dashboard is still a uh, work in progress. And we have a couple of uh, workloads defined already. So I would like to stress here that for each and every project, there are three different perspectives. Uh, the envisioned features um, of the builders of those projects, right? Uh, the current status quo, uh, what's implemented, what has been done, in what way uh, that's presented of this project, and also the perceived features of this project by the users. There are three stages or three different perspectives. Uh, what we want to have is, of course, to consolidate them and into our own uh, envisioned version of, of this project. But right now, I think um, it's too early. So what I would encourage or I would hope for you guys is to not uh, jump to conclusions too fast. Uh, if you feel uh, interested in this project, come and join us. Uh, we have a community uh, call uh, every two weeks. If you check um, the website, the links here, uh, there's a Slack, there's a Gitter. And um, we welcome everyone uh, to join us. Uh, I would like to stress that um, Kubevila, even though I'm from Alibaba Cloud, but this project is truly open source. And from day zero, day zero, there are um, bootstrapping engineers from eight different organizations. So it's truly um, by the community. A lot of people feel the same pain. They want to do the same thing. And we are doing this together. Um, so we hope more will be joining us. And we hope this project will provide uh, enough benefits to the users of Kubernetes. Thank you.